All right, so let's start chapter three in physical science, which is the third chapter of this semester where we focus on chemistry. And this chapter is all about states of matter, okay? So in essence, this is kind of simple chemistry, but there's still some to it and some things that we want to learn from this chapter and about states of matter. You probably already know what the states of matter are. So your three major states of matter, and there's more than this, which we'll talk about, but your three major states of matter are solids, liquids, and gases, okay? Solids have a definite shape as well as a definite volume. So if I have a cube, let's say I have a metal cube, I put that metal cube inside of a cup, that metal cube will not change shape. It will stay the same shape, right? It won't take the shape of the cup. It has a definite volume. Remember from chapter one that volume is how much space something takes up. Okay, so it's always going to take up the same amount of space in the cup as well. The space doesn't change, right? As far as the particles go, the particles uh, on a microscopic level vibrate in fixed positions. They don't bounce around and move like we'll talk about with gases. And the particles have low kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is energy due to movement. The word kinetic means movement. You'll read about that a little bit in your book. Okay. Second one we'll talk about is liquids. Liquids, unlike solids, have a variable shape. Their shape varies. It's not a definite shape. They take the shape of their container. So if I was to take a liquid and I was to pour it into a glass, it would take the shape of the glass, right? Similar to solids, though, just like solids, liquids have a definite volume. So liquids always take up the same amount of space, uh, no matter how much space they have. They don't expand or decrease just because they have more or less room, their volume is definite, okay? Unlike solids, particles can move around each other in liquids. They don't just stay still. They can uh, follow each other closely together and move to new locations. They have medium kinetic energy. So their kinetic energy isn't low like solids. It's not high where they're moving around constantly, but they do have some kinetic energy or energy due to movement. The last one, which is the complete opposite of solids, would be gases. Unlike solids, gases have a variable shape. They take the shape of the space that they're in. And unlike gas, and unlike uh, solids and liquids, gases have a variable volume. They can fill all the space of a container, or they can condense to the size of a container. So you can condense a lot of gas in a small area, or gas can spread itself out and fill up a whole room even. Um, it just depends on how big the container is. So the volume and the shape vary, whereas solids, the shape is definite and the volume is definite. So they're the complete opposite. Liquids are kind of in the middle. They have a definite volume like solids, but they have a variable shape like gases. Okay. Particles of gases can move around constantly freely. They're moving all the time, and they have a high kinetic energy. They're constantly moving and bouncing into each other, and we'll talk about gas laws in 3.2. So their kinetic energy, their energy is very high. Some other states of matter that you may not be familiar with that's different than solids, liquids, and gases are plasma and then BECs, Bose Einstein Consendence. Okay. Plasma is a very, 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 very extremely hot state of matter. So it only exists at high temperatures. Okay. So, like on the sun. Um, actually, the majority of matter in the universe is plasma. You wouldn't think so, but think about what stars are made of. They have plasma, right? And stars are the biggest things in the universe. So 99% of all matter in the universe is actually plasma. It's only a small percentage that's solids, liquids, and gases, and other states of matter, okay? Another one is Bose-Einstein consensus. These are the opposite of plasma. These only exist at very, 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 very extremely low temperatures. And the way that these exist is the temperature is actually so low that the groups of atoms start to behave as a single particle. So some crazy stuff happens if you get one of those. As I talked about with kinetic energy, kinetic energy is energy an object has due to its motion. So when you see the word kinetic, think motion. The faster an object's moving, the more kinetic energy it has. The slower it's moving, the less kinetic energy it has. What the theory of kinetic energy states, though, is that all particles of matter are in constant motion at all times. So gases are moving around very, very fast with high kinetic energy all the time. 
Liquids have medium kinetic energy, but they do have some motion, and even solids, which seem like they're not moving at all, vibrate in fixed locations at a molecular level, so those have motion as well. And that brings us to the end of 3.1, which is about your different sets of atoms. So solids, liquids, and gases, plasma, and Bose-Einstein consonants, as well as kinetic theory. You'll read about this a bit more in your book, as well as complete assignments based on these. Okay? Thanks, guys.